everybody, it's your girl Anita, yeah. your favorite diva, and I am back to do my quick thoughts, early impressions on the episode 5 entitled Crown Big. Now baby, can somebody please, can somebody please tell me why Janar is so slow? Is he on the spectrum, y'all? Is he on the spectrum? Because I want to know why is he so slow? I am every move he made was flawed. I was like, oh my God, nigga, are you dumb? Are you dumb, Janar? This was just a whole freaking mess. Before we get into it, Lord have mercy. Let me just start right here. This is going to be your spoiler warning. I'm going to get into it. Just my quick thoughts about episode five, Crown Vic. First of all, in the episode, we're dealing with the aftermath of D-Mac. Tommy and D-Mac trying to figure out what's going on. D-Mac is losing his shit. Tommy is drinking, trying to figure out what to do. Diamond got it handled. Okay, whatever. We're at the diner and in the most, oh my God, this was so amateurish. This was like one of the point out the goofies. There was a shootout with Diamond in this cafe diner that he was talking to the guy who owned the diner, knowing his father, saying that his father was sick and dying in hospice and he needs to go see him. And when that happened, um, Treason or the other side they flipped to came running up in there shooting up the joint. It was so corny. The acting was so ick. But anyway, Diamond ain't no killer, y'all. Diamond is not no killer. All right, so yeah, that was that. Diamond tell Tommy that, you know, he better get his nephew under control because he can't be out here in these streets. Because he turns around and he sees D-Mac talking to the damn cops. The cops have pulled up on him outside of the barbershop. Diamond already told Tommy about what happened. He was like, when you was going to tell me, we just need to go ahead and dead that. And she was like, you need to figure out your nephew. Vic and Claudia are supposed to be meeting up. And as soon as he hangs up the phone from Claudia, the police roll up on him. Saying, we need to talk to you. They get in there. They try to interrogate him. He asks for a lawyer. And that's about that. Um, The, the girl, Dre from The Shy. <laughs> I'm going to get the names together. She said, let him go. I'm trying to get the big fish, so we need to get him to cooperate. We just gonna let him go for now. She's playing chess, not chess. Y'all gonna listen to me when I be talking about these damn kids. These damn kids and teenagers, they know the they are doing. Okay, don't be sitting around thinking they, they know damn angels. They know how to play the adults against each other, and that is exactly what D Mac did. Know that Kate, his grandma, is really, really feeling him, loving him, and you know she's making a change. I I thought she was sick, maybe, but it looks like she's making a change, and D Mac is the reason for the change. So he sit up there and start talking about some girl knowing damn well it ain't that. It could be that, but we know that that's not what it is. He's itching to get back on them streets. So he sit up there and um, talks her into giving him some money so he can go get her a pack of cigarettes and some Trojans. I said, What the fuck? Child, it, it's a mess. Now we know. Treason is not effing with Janar. Janar is losing control. He is losing the reins. He's sitting up there trying to tell the um the two people that he got left to be loyal to him. They done ran out of product. He got to pay the Serbs. Miguel not messing with him. Everybody know he going down bad. He on the, he's on that um that Mary Jane not Mary Jane. He on that booger sugar and ain't nobody messing with him. And he said he gonna get it. Don't worry. Just stay loyal. I'm gonna get it. So then he goes to roll up on a girl. Her name is um Adrian. Is it Adrian? It's, it's something. I follow her on IG. She's been on some different web series or whatever. I put it on the screen. But he goes up to her and ends up ganking her, take two bricks of hers, and he pulled the gun out on her. I thought he was gonna kill her, but he didn't. I'm sorry, I thought he was gonna murder her, but he did. Um, he and he took her gold chain. So now he takes the gold chain and put it around his dumb ass neck. That's why I say, y'all, he was on the slow bus. He was on the slow bus, and you can't convince me. His mother dropped him on his head a couple too many times. His father must have knocked him upside the head a couple too many times. But that boy, all the scruples are loose. You hear me? So after he gets back to his spot, he go tell the dudes, don't be sleeping on him. He got this. He got it from Miguel. And they was like, what? You got it from Miguel? 
the next thing you know, one of the dudes said, that's Manny's chain you got on. And I'm, I'm sitting up here like with the, my face palm on, on my face, on my forehead, like this nigga ain't out here running around in the streets with the, with the, with the evidence plastered on his body. He is so fucking stupid, y'all. Oh, girl, you know, you know, it ain't no way, it ain't no way. So anyway, he gave them the bricks. They take that and go for what it for what it is. But it, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. See, when you do clownery, the clown comes back to bite. Next, we see Vic returning to to Claudia's place. The dude from Dublin is there, and she, he's like, "Let's get this show on the road." Claudia asks, "Is he okay?" He introduces him to Big Red. He's the deadliest assassin in Dublin. He was like, we already heard about the four horsemen. He said, well, I'm the apocalypse. I said, okay, all right then, <laughs> if you say so. He gives them the plan, said nine o'clock, he dies tonight. Vic said he got it. They were trying to call a truce. Now he was working with the dude Kilo Diamond and Kilo was working together inside to try to bring all of the people together under one umbrella which sounds good but yes kilo they done messed up so much on the outside kilo is just like you know you're gonna have to give me half of this whole thing that y'all got going on and when tommy hears that tommy is like no and he hangs up the phone diamond is like we are we need this we don't need no more war bloodshed and all this other stuff he said we gotta find another way because he's not trying to give up that much power after having so much trouble with D-Mac, he ends up calling Big Smurf for a favor. And in this favor, we see that he kidnaps D-Mac while he's out. He figures out he's out, kidnaps him, put him in a truck, and takes him off to um, someplace. He doesn't even know where he is. All he sees is cows and horses, and I think it's some kind of school that he has to stay in to keep him out of trouble. We see Maria and her doctor lover surgeon get into an altercation. She's having different thoughts about him because she's kind of feeling Tommy or whatever. And so she picks a fight with him. She leaves and she's walking to Miguel and Miguel is parked in a truck waiting. And the doctor runs out the hospital and grabs her by her wrist. And he turns her around and we see that there are some words but of course, you know, Miguel don't like the words or him putting his hands on his sister like that. And so he, he asked her, he was like, is everything okay? She said, yeah, he's an asshole. No questions asked, bye, let's go. So later on in the episode, we get to see Miguel and his henchmen go to visit the doctor, surgeon, lover, and crushes both of his hands and basically sends him a message, don't mess with my sister like that. After Vic leaves, we see Dublin and uh claudia he wants to bang he wants to bang he wants to clap the cheeks she was like we're gonna clap the cheeks after everything is done he was like i want you now she was like fine so she sits up there she give him a couple of humps and pumps or whatever he come and then next thing you know she's sitting up there really trying to enact her plan and in this scene he reveals that she will never be queen as long as Vic is alive she will never run the flynn family and so she has to rethink everything that she's done. And then later on, we'll get to it. Diamond goes and he visits, visits his father. And his father, like he said, he's mean as a rattlesnake or whatever. That's fine. He tells him some truths. First, he, he was real, real huffy about it. He was like, don't come in here. Think you're going to get no apology and all this other stuff. So they go back at it. Then uh, he gets himself all worked up. They had to put Diamond out the room. But when Diamond came back and he had settled down and he was um, stable again, he went on to say that he knew that Diamond was the stronger one. He said, Jannar is not as strong as you. You got to look out for your little brother. Blah blah blah. Woofy, woofy, woofy. Next thing you know, he dies. Uh, he passes on, and then Jannar comes back, and he's like crying and upset. But while what Diamond doesn't know is that when he first saw him in there with Pops, he left and he went to go get high, and he got high with one of these these white boys. Okay, and so you know these white boys, they they on the needles. Okay, so. He got hit up with the needle, and he's basically like a full-blown bass head. So that wasn't a good look either. 
but when Jannar came back, he uh, Diamond was sitting in the hospital. He told him that Pops was gone, and he pretty much gave him the closure that Jannar needs, hopefully. And he welcomed him back into CBI because of what his father said to him. And he's taking it to heart. But baby, when I tell you, Jannara is no one you can trust. Jannara, you can't, I, I can't even, if I was Jannara, I wouldn't even be able to trust myself. That's how out of control Jannara is. So back to the coup de gras. We're trying to get this whole thing. Vic is at the house with Da and to unbeknownst to him, he's back with Paulie. Paulie is back over there. He's trying to get Paulie out the house. He was like, "This, um, I just want it to be me and you." And then he was like, "Well, Paulie, can you go get some this scotch? That real good scotch that you got. We'll come when you come back. We'll go ahead and celebrate then." He was like, "No, we got plenty of scotch." So that didn't work. So he went out there, told Claudia that Paulie's here, and she's like, "Shit, can you get him out?" And then everything is in motion. So at the at the same time, she's sitting up there trying to figure out what to do. She, she was panicked, and at this moment, she went ahead. This was her opportunity to say 8.30, not 9 o'clock. But if he's still there, they can knock him out, too. She probably wouldn't have thought he was going to survive. So she made the call to tell him to stay there. Game plan is 9 o'clock. And so that is when I knew that Claudia could do everything. Don't fuck with her, okay? So it's going down. They, they having a drink. And they hear two gunshots. Boom, boom. The next thing you know, they get up, check the um, check the cameras. They see that they're being infiltrated. So they see that Dublin is making a move. They go into the um, the vault, get the heat or whatever. They needed some bulletproof vests as well. But they went out there and they got their little guns or whatever. Like Walter had the big dog. But everybody else had Glocks and pistols. And I'm sitting up here like, y'all, did y'all just see how many people was coming? To that's neither here nor there. But anyway, they went out there prepared for war. It went down. Uncle Polly died. Um, Big Red, he eventually died. And I was surprised. But before Uncle Polly died, he actually got a lot of those soldiers out. He, t I know he took out at least about four or five of them. But he, he did his fair share. So he went out in a blaze of glory. And then Walter and Vic has this confrontation. And... It was at that point Walter knew that Claudia was behind it because he knew that Claudia was the only one that had the balls to do this. And so when he told him that, that rubbed uh, Victor the wrong way. And Victor was like, nah, and he, uh, hit him in the back and said, nah, we put this together, me and her, to take you out. So then when he dared him to do it, pull the trigger, Vic shoots his father in the eye, right in the eye, and he's gone. So he, and that is why the name of the episode is Crown Vic. When Vic finally gets back to Claudia's house, Dublin is in there talking about, is everything good? She's trying to figure out how the hell he got out of it. The next thing you know, Dublin starts to say, you know, they came early. They came at 8.30. He said, she was like, you didn't tell them that it was supposed to be changed to 8.30. He was like, no, you were supposed to tell your brother. Girl, she took that pow pow out and hit him right in the dome, okay? And But not before Vic was like well aware of what had just transpired. So Because a dead man can't tell no tales, right? So she did that in order to save herself. But he knows and sees everything that happened. Tommy go back to the house and asks Kate where D Mac is. Now, this is a little something that is on the tail end of something I already talked about. We know he got Big Smurf took him to the seminary school and he's put away. But the way Tommy said it to Kate was that, you know, you know D Mac is her favorite. And so he said he's gone. And she said, What? She was like, he, she was like, well, when is he coming back? He said, he ain't going to never come back, or he ain't coming back. And I was like, Tommy, why would you say something like that? The next thing you know, child, she said, I raised monsters. Look, little Barry White said, you ain't raised nobody, Kate. We raised ourselves. And monsters or animals, be it as it may, D-Mac is gone right now. And then next thing you know, she goes, and she's hitting a book of sugar. And I think she's going to fall off the deep end. And baby, the episode ends with Crown Vic going to the feds, talking about 
he want to turn his sister in and let her go to jail forever. But of course, Dre from the shy, the, the um, police lady playing chess, she said, okay, I, I can do that. That's fine. He said he want immunity. She said, that's fine. But I need Tommy Egan. You need to infiltrate CBI and get enough so I can take Tommy Egan down. And this is when I know the crown was broken. Crown Vic, you done wrote your death certificate in the in your biggest episode where you are crowned, the crown has fallen on the ground because you became the snitch. Child, this was a hot flaming mess. It was action packed. But it's time for y'all to tell me what did you think about the episode. Make sure you put your comments. I know I probably missed some things. Don't know if you'll get a recap, but I want to get my um, first quick thoughts out because this is pretty lengthy. This could serve as the episode recap but we'll see i want to come back with a live discussion a little bit later so you make sure you come back um yeah as always i'm nita your favorite diva make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel and make sure you come back